Hey, how's it going, boys and girls? Um, we're going to be back here talking about batteries again, and later on, I'm going to uh, take a battery out of the uh, out of the Tesla Model Y pack that I've got on my uh, on my right. So the first thing we want to do is talk a little bit about the potting compound. Over here, you can see that the uh, potting compound was a different color, and it's. It, it doesn't really feel much different. It still has the, uh, the ability to crumble and whatnot in your fingers. Uh, the new potting uh, compound is like a seafoam color. It's, a, it's a, or sorry, a blue color, not like the seafoam over here. This, uh, this looks a little different too. If you can look over here, you can see that when they put this compound on, it, uh, it was quite thick and there are no holes. When you look over on this side, on the new Model Y, you can see that there's actually gaps between the different areas. Uh, we're not quite sure why that is like that or what they've done, but I can tell you one thing for sure. This is going to be a lot less expensive than, uh, than the Model 3's uh, battery pack. Later on, we're going to talk about what we think as far as the Model 3 versus Model Y battery pack and whether or not they're the same or if they've been like merged, but right now we're just gonna go through the, uh, the obvious things. So the next thing we're gonna talk about a little bit is the way that the uh, battery was wrapped. If you, uh, if you have a look at uh, the Model Y, y you don't see anything except this top gap here, or this top piece, which is a solid piece of plastic. If we look at the Model 3, things are a little different you'll see that there's a plastic tray similar to this that's, uh, that was put all the way around the battery. And that was to contain the foam that, uh, that was put in place. You can also see that the, uh, the plastic tray was put on uh, prior to the foaming because it, it guides right underneath. The other thing that you'll notice is that this plastic Let's see if I can break a piece off. This plastic component here, or uh, maybe it's a glue adhesive, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is not present on the Model Y. So this might have been a running change, an improvement for the, uh, for the operators, or maybe they just found that uh, this was redundant material and they don't have to do it again. So if we look a little bit more here on the Model Y, you'll notice that there are no corrugations on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the main header here to, uh, to get the fluids through to the, uh, through to the battery. The Model 3, on the other hand, has corrugations, and we'll show you that in a little bit. The, uh, the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting was uh, the way that they've done the, uh, the job as far as connecting the header to the rest of the coolant system. And it's really quite simple. You'll notice that it's got a single O-ring and it's got uh, a double finger clamp snap fit. So you just push this on, boom, done. Rock solid. But the better thing is that now I can move this around. It makes it easy for the operators and uh, it gets rid of uh, leaks. O-rings work really well with leaks. Let's have a look at what happened at the Model 3 with their strategy. Here's the uh, header that they had for the Model 3. This is really rigid. It's a uh, uh, machined aluminum and uh, this is the uh, one of the clamps that went in similar to where we've got the Model Y and you'll notice that there's two O-rings it's much heavier and it's got a double clamp that really and truly uh, I can't even squeeze in so but let's go back and have a look and make sure that we uh, understand that this tube is more expensive than the one that's on the uh, on the Model Y they've gotten rid of that expansion joint that corrugated area which to me, again, is a good idea and probably came as a result of experimentation on the factory floor or uh, continuous improvement. The next thing we can look at is the cooling fins. Um, again, we look at uh, the cooling fins over here and these are completely covered in the adhesive that used to stop right here on the Model 3. It just ended right there. This one here has been, it's been coated all the way along. And I like that idea because it acts like a double seal between the header and the, uh, and the micro-channel coolant fins that are uh, inside there. This is a much better idea. It 
costs a little bit more to do uh, to do the adhesive all the way along, but it's uh, it's it's a good idea. It's great from a leak standpoint. So many of you have asked what we think about the changes between the uh, the Model Three and the uh, and the Model Y. And uh, I'm going to show you something here on the back side of the uh, Model Y. These are the controlling modules that are on each one of the different battery packs like this. And over here, you can see that it says uh, Model 3. And if we take a shot over there on the module that's on the Model Y, you'll see that it also says Model 3. Now, this one has got uh, more population than, uh, than that one. You, if I put them side by side, you don't have to be an electrical engineer to see that uh, they don't look quite the same. We think that there's been a reduction in the amount of, uh, in the amount of um, uh, or the need for, uh, for different, uh, different components that are on here. It's either that or uh, we can't find a module one. This is a module one, this is a module three, but we're gonna be uh, having a look. We do know though that the, um, the Batman and Robin stuff is still on there. You can see it here. So anyway, we're thinking that over time, Tesla has gone through and done some refinement. Uh, we are not gonna take apart another Model, uh, Model 3 just to prove that, but for now, we're gonna just say that uh, it looks a lot like they've taken the Model 3 and they've improved upon it, cost reduced it, made things easier to, uh, to manufacture for the guys on the assembly line. And then over here, um, they, this is what we're going to probably see in the, way of, uh, in the way of a new design that'll be in the Model Y and in the, uh, in the Model uh, 3. So I think maybe they've commonized the whole works. We'll have to find out. Now, what we're going to do next is I'm going to be taking the, um, I'm going to be taking this part of the battery down a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one of the collectors and I'm going to cut away some of the, uh, some of the header pipes. <clears throat> um, so we can, it's easy to take some of this stuff off. It's gonna be a little more difficult to take other parts off. So there's a lot of different ways that we could make this happen. Um, one way is the fast way. Some people might do it this way. Um, I probably won't, but anyway, just to let you know, um, this is, this is one way to do it, um, but uh, I, I think we're going to probably uh, dispense with that and uh, use nothing but uh, nothing but plastic um, nothing but plastic chiseling tools. Um, uh, anyways, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll be back in a few seconds here, and I'm going to start taking this thing to pieces. Hang on to your hats. Okay, boys and girls, um, the torch was a little bit of fun, but uh, now we're gonna get serious. Um, I'm going to uh, do this in a, a distinct order, and for those who are terrified that I'm gonna blow myself up, I just wanna let you know that this has been fully discharged. Um, it's still 60 some odd volts, but at the end of the day, um, the, uh, the amperage is down so low that uh, there's no, no problem. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut off this collector plate. Now, you could go from here, and if your arms were long enough, you could touch the other end, and you might get a, a trickle charge, but for the most part, there's nothing here that's going to, going to affect me at all. So I don't do anything that's dangerous. So with that, we'll start cutting this, and then I'm gonna cut the pipes, and then I'm gonna cut the top, and then I'm gonna cut the plastic sheathing, and then we're gonna chisel out, um, uh, chisel out uh, one of the batteries. So, Anyway, this will take a little bit. We might be turning this on to um, uh, time lapse, but anyway, we're going to get started.
Okay, so you can see that this was just as easy as pie to try and get this thing apart. Uh, you'll notice that um, uh, it hasn't been damaged. Nothing here has been damaged. There's no split, no nothing. Um, I do not recommend anybody trying this at home. We have all kinds of things here to get rid of problems if we do get into one. And quite frankly, this is not an easy process. And I took a whole bunch of them out over there. So I know kind of how to make, uh, get the job done. I will tell you one thing. This looks a little different than, uh, than the other one. Let's have a look at that top section. And you can see there's a slightly different, uh, slightly different look to this. Um, I'm gonna get one of the other ones out of the jar and I will show you. Well, actually, now that I see the both of them, uh, nope, I, I take that back. I take it back. It's just that this is brand new and this one's uh, been around for a long time. Anyway, at the end of the day, here we are with the two um, 2170 batteries. Uh, this one from the uh, Tesla 3, this one here from the Model Y. And uh, uh, at first blush, they look, they look like they're identical. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll do some more, but for now, everything looks good.